Meanwhile, Russell Wilson was efficient despite playing with a sprained knee and dealing with an early East Coast kickoff, throwing three touchdown passes in the Seahawks' 27-17 victory over the Jets on Sunday. The Jets now fall to one and three as Fitzpatrick threw three more interceptions and became one of five players to have at least 10 interceptions in the first four games in the last 30 seasons. Merrill Hodge, how we doing? What's going so on? good What's to going have on? you. I feel like I'm in a hot seat right now. <laughs> no, but I like this seat. No. Not at all. I like this seat. No, For a couple you, reasons you, we'll get into You that. own that seat. I've been wanna... able to pick this man's brain in like 15 years. I've been in the hallway. That's right. Good to see you. Meryl, I do want to start with you. Is it time for Geno Smith? Well, let me just say this. There's one thing that bothers coaches more than any other thing that you can do in football. It's the only stat I care about. I'm not a stat guy, but there is one. And if you gave it to him before every game, I could probably handicap this to a 90% tile of who's going to win. Turnovers. Like, you just can't turn the football over. And when you start doing that, I can just tell you this. Coaches, it, it drives them nuts. Then you got to look at how it's being turned over. So we'll go to... Uh, last week, just alone, Kansas City. Because I watched that tape. I haven't watched the tape from last week or Sunday's game, so I can speak more to the truth. There were four of those interceptions that you would just have, in the meeting, you'd have to say, what are you looking at? I mean, what are you doing? Why are you even trying it there? I mean, the defense doesn't even tell you to go there. And we have other options. And that would start becoming disturbing. You know, when Aaron Rodgers was struggling early in the year, and he's still not kind of out of that. And he, and he kind of played like that last year. Um, anytime we get to this position and we start, you know, what is the problem? It usually comes down to this. It's just not executing the play. I'm going to tell you what actually makes Tom Brady awesome. Peyton Banny, when he played, they'll take a check down and a flat six times in a row if the defense gives it to him. That's what the defense gave me. I'm going to take that because eventually you don't want me to throw the check down. You don't want me to throw the flat, and now I sting you. So... When you see Fitzpatrick playing to the way he's playing, now keep in mind, the evidence shifts more towards this style of play than, you know, the way he played last year, which last year kind of got blown out of proportion because, I mean, they did play well as a team, but he played good. He didn't play great. And I think people got caught up in thinking he played great and he was elite. But if you weighed the evidence, the evidence shifts more to how he's playing right now. This shouldn't be a shock, but this is disturbing. And as a coaching staff, I, I think there's no question you got to think about making a change. Geno Smith is the answer, and and look, he is a hot and cold quarterback. It was even that way in college. Half the college season was like, oh, my God, like what we think about Lamar Jackson now practically, and then it was like, what happened to that guy? Is that the same season? Like, I think of it as two different seasons, and as a pro, he's had some good games and some bad games, and at a certain point, you say, well, the jury's out on a certain guy, and then when he got hurt, unfortunately, in the fight, you thought in a bad place of your brain, but a realistic one, you said, no, this might be what the Jets fans want. It's an excuse to, to start Fitzpatrick, who's at least uh, competent. But there's this, his, Fitzpatrick's brand, I think, as a quarterback, because he went to Harvard, is that he's smart. But in fact, he doesn't play a smart quarterback. He's like, a, as Ryan Clark says, he's a gunslinger without the gun. You know, like he's, he, he's a risk taker. And I don't mind risk takers, even with the turnovers, Merrill, and I understand why coaches hate him, because turnover differential will usually give you your winner. But it's like a point guard in the NBA, especially when he's young. Uh, I want to see him champing at the bit. I want to see him trying to win. I'd rather have to pull the reins back a little bit than have a guy who's overly cautious, a guy who's trying to win the game instead of a guy who's trying not to lose it. I think that's more than just a semantic kind of uh, difference there. But Fitzpatrick has only ever played well in his two walk years, in his contract seasons. He hasn't played great. When the chip's on the line last year, they needed to win to go to the playoffs. He had his worst game of the season. And Geno Smith at least has shown you flashes where he has been good at times. And I thought, like, ah, I've seen enough of Geno Smith. He's not going to be good. But I'm not 100% positive. Maybe there's an NFL quarterback in there. Um, you look at Fitzpatrick, 14 picks in his last seven games. Geno, bad Geno, right? 14 picks in his last 15 games. Played one game last year, week eight in Oakland, 265 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. I mean, and, and, and that was the only game with Brandon Marshall ever on the Jets with Geno Smith. I think it's absolutely time. I don't think you need to wait anymore. Jets ain't going to win this year anyway with the Patriots in the division. Let's see what Geno's got. I disagree with you. And the reason why I disagree with you is because Geno Smith, Ryan Fitzpatrick, is a product of Geno Smith. 
the way that they lost faith in Geno Smith was what led to Ryan Fitzpatrick arriving in New York to begin with. Let's also take into account the fact that he, even though he has been god-awful the last two weeks, nine interceptions, all right, in two weeks, that is just abysmal. Let's just call it what it is. He's just got four touchdowns with ten interceptions. He's got a rating of 57, a QBR of 56. He's only completing 55% of his passes. That's just pathetic. I mean, it's just pathetic. We get all of that. The flip side to it is that let's not let the Jets secondary off the hook. Let's not let let's not forget that Darrell Revis, Buster Screen, okay, Gilcrest, and Pride these boys, they ain't getting it done. They're not getting it done. And and you got the the Jets applied pressure to Russell Wilson yesterday. He was elusive. He made things happen, but they were breathing down his neck now. The bottom line is you got guys that were getting open. That puts more pressure on the offense to compensate, and that's more difficult. Ryan Fitzpatrick ain't made for that. He's just not made for that. We can't ignore what we're seeing on the other side of the ball for the New York Jets. We also have to remember that Geno Smith, even though I think he's got promise, he's got a chance, rather, to have promise, I think that it would be better if it was somewhere else. New York is so down on Geno that the second he goes out there, his one interception is tantamount to the 10 that Ryan Fitzpatrick throws. No one has faith in him in the big out. You know the last you know thing he did? No, no. When he last start he had, week 17, yes, 2014, was game, his last start. One game. Was his two, last two, start. Yep. Uh, 358 yards, 20 of 25, three touchdowns, no interceptions. I'm just saying, like, but, when last seen in action, he was good. It's one but game. You, but do you know what's going to happen the next time he starts? Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. He's gonna That's probably have, right. Maybe. But, but we it's do know games, if it's Patrick. Why, why, it's two good. games, Max. Right. Here's how I look at both. It's what's, what's kind of interesting. You mentioned um, Fitzpatrick's best years. Do you know what was the cog to all that? Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator, who is there now. So what is interesting is what had Chan Gailey is in this meeting right. deciphering this because he is seeing the worst of Fitzpatrick right now where he's been able to manage him out of that. So actually his thought process and his input is probably going to be the difference in this. I would think that he's going to favor Fitzpatrick. I think he stays there because the evidence is clear on both of them. They are what they are. Geno Smith's not going to change. He's been like that throughout his college year into the NFL. That's who he is. He's never going to change that. He will be just inconsistent. You have to accept that. Fitzpatrick, what I'm saying is, do you have a little hope to your point in that Chan Gailey's like, hey, listen, Little hope. I can clean him up. Here's what we got to do. I got to have a heart to heart and a man to man thing. Yep. We got to start doing this from here on out. Here's our staples, and we're going to build from here. We got to get you back on track. Also, remember, they're not running the ball that effectively. At least they didn't do so mm -hmm. yesterday. And I love me yeah. some Todd Bowles, but sig defense is his signature. If you're going to you lose, can't have you can't have problems on the defensive side if, of the ball. If you're going to lose anyway, at least do it with someone who may have a future. You know what Fitzpatrick is for sure. <laughs> You're not, we don't know 100%. You could argue neither one of them have a, a future. But let me just tell you this, they did get out coached. Yeah. Because I'll tell you this, this Seattle offensive line was as bad, bad. as they've been in two years, keep in mind, especially on the right, right side. Right. And you know what they did? They did schematics yeah. Yeah. to get rid of the football quick to neutralize Got it. it. Got out coached, too. We've got to leave it there, guys. Speaking of Dang quarterback it. questions, Merrill, <laughs> I cannot wait to hear what you have to say about our next subject. Andrew ah. Luck, ain't so lucky as of late. <laughs> so we can't wait to hear this. Max's pick for MVP? What? Hmm. Stick around for his defense of that statement coming up next. I think the Colts are going to win the division. I think the only real weapon they have on either side of the ball is Andrew Luck. I think he's going to get credit for that. Win or lose, it's going to be a one-man show all year, and I think voters will give him credit so long as their record is decent. I think Luck will get them to the playoffs, put up monster numbers, and will be the leading candidate for MVP. Max in black and white. He had Andrew Luck as his MVP before the season, but the Colts dropped to 1-3 and three after losing to the previously winless Jaguars in London on Sunday. Luck led Indianapolis on three fourth-quarter touchdown drives, but wasn't able to complete the comeback. He finished with 234 yards, two TDs, an interception, and was sacked six times in the loss. Max, does Luck still have your MVP vote? If the MVP was given out today, it would go to Matt Ryan based on what's happened so far. If you want me to make a prediction, I'm not going to back off luck yet. In spite of the fact that his team looks terrible and he is being criticized unfairly, I believe, although Merrill will, will clean us up on this. He'll adjudicate uh, after years what Stephen, I, Stephen A and I have to say. I want to say something quickly. First, just I'll give you some numbers, and then I want you to do a little thought experiment. Uh, the running game. Colts are 18th in yards per rush. If you take out rushes by luck himself, they're 27th. He can run the football. He's still, despite the fact that he is one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL, 
no running game, and no defense. He's 24th, the defense is 24th in total defense, yards allowed, and 30th in points allowed, okay? In spite of all that, his QBR is ninth overall in the NFL. He's the second most pressured quarterback in the league, and he's ninth in total QBR in the NFL. The, and the Colts have nine drops, which is the third most in football. And he's still ninth in total QBR, in spite of everything I, I just told you. Um, here's the th and by the way, that division, who's running away? They think the Texans without J.J. Watt are some world beaters, and everyone else is one and three, just like them. Here's the thought experiment I want to ask you to do. You think if the Falcons could start next season or in the middle of the season, you got to learn the playbook and everything, and they had a chance to swap right now straight up Matt Ryan for Andrew Luck, they wouldn't? Who wouldn't you trade for Andrew Luck? This guy is doing this, putting up those numbers, and by the way, when he took over a 2-14 and 14 team, 11-3, and 11-3, 11-3, and with nothing around him, he and Cam Newton have both, Cam Newton this year, it's back to what it was, become underrated quarterbacks because they have nothing around them and the whole game plan of the other team every single week is stop that guy and still they can't stop that guy. If you look at the losses this year, they were in that Broncos game late on the road. Everything else has been a one-score loss. Yes, I think Andrew Luck can still win the MVP this year if the Colts make the playoffs. I think you're smoking something. And the reason why I think you're smoking something is because you're not thinking about two key things going on here. Number one, like you pointed out, uh, but you didn't delve into it deeply enough, all the deficiencies that are around Andrew Luck, whether it's an offensive line, whether it's the lack of a running game, whether it's a defense that's highly suspect, whether it's Pagano and Grigson and their relationship and their ability to come together. And when are we going to talk about Grigson? Because I do understand that Pagano's the head coach and he has to take some hits, particularly with a defensive background with there being so many questions about their defense, particularly the first couple of weeks of this season. But then we have to think about Grigson, and we have to think about Ursay. Ursay is the guy that decided not to get rid of either of them, to bring them back together, to have this whole big celebration as if that, you know what, we won the Super Bowl championship, and now we're not going to several times. On we're going to keep everybody. Deals. We're going we're gonna to keep these guys together, okay? What has Grigson done? There have been, you, you gave up a first round pick to acquire Trent Richardson. Let's not forget that, okay? You, that wasn't the only mistake that he's made. He's made others in free agency. He's made others with the draft. He finally went the right route in drafting Kelly to improve your offensive line. But it's five guys that play that position. One guy ain't going to ain't gonna be able to do but so much. At the end, Merle, my position with Max has always been this. You're talking about luck because you're thinking about luck's greatness. You're not thinking about the parts around him how deficient they're going to be, how they're going to come up short in terms of wins and losses, and nobody's going to give league MVP honors, no matter how great the talent is, to a guy playing on a subpar team that can't even make the playoffs, which is what Indianapolis is on the verge of not doing, m making the playoffs. That was my argument. It has nothing to do with Andrew Luck, because I believe in Andrew Luck. But you haven't protected him for years. He got sacked six times just to you go have him fly across the pond just to get beat up when he could have stayed at home and got yeah. beat up like and that. And he's got a bad this shoulder. Is, this is what their problem is. That's why there's no way in hell he was going to win MVP and this should, it should have never been considered. Right. Well, I, the record alone, well, nobody ever considering. Now, that doesn't minimize, you know, right. the kind of skill set he has. But his record right now, if they continue like that, they won't look, forget about it. Yeah, that's why the division is like that. Yeah. They're all one and three, except for the Texans. They still won't consider him. Record will not allow them to consider him. Now, um, you go back to this is why I could argue John Elway was the greatest quarterback to ever play. Because he could take inferior talent, flaws that we had across the board, and he could offset them. That's really, you took a couple teams in the Super Bowl, even though they got hammered, that you put another quarterback there, they probably don't even go 8-8. Eight and eight. Now, that being said, um, with Andrew Luck, a lot of the issues that they have, and you could talk about how they're asking him to play offense, too, quite honestly, because when you talk about their offensive line having issues, it's not just them. I mean, you got to incorporate the tight end, and you got to incorporate the running back, because you know what they're doing? They're keeping all seven guys in at times. It's kind of like what they do for Cam Newton. Cam, we're not going to protect you, okay? That doesn't mean we're not going to get everybody out, but the guys we're going to get out, which keep in mind, they're perimeter players now are about as freakish as there is in the NFL, too. So let's not say that he don't have anything, because their perimeter players are fast, yeah, explosive, dynamic. Yeah. We just got to give him time. So, you know, I'm watching the game 
um, yesterday. And one of the problems going into that we did on Sports Center is that they don't work well together. You know, all four of us have to block four people up there. Well, these four guys are going to cross all different ways. We got to see it the same way. Well, they don't see it the same way. You got the tackle in the back going to one guy. Meanwhile, we got inside linebacker that is obvious to everybody in, on planet Earth. Why wouldn't you block him? They just do that too many times, five or six times a game. San Diego, it cost him six points because he got a fumble off of it. But then going one, to one other layer when you think about coaching and watching him, is they do a lot of their run action where he turns his back. Well, you already got problems up front. Now I'm robbing you of an opportunity to see things coming. So when you flip your head around, you're already in trouble and you didn't even have a chance to get out of it. So there's a, all these layers that are compounding the problem. Um, and then, listen, when you get to the playoffs, Luck has not played his best. In fact, he's probably had his worst games in the playoff, unfortunately. I think he's a That's rare because time. he's doing the way, what you said Elway did. He's covering up for the flaws of his team. It's exposed in the playoffs. Right. Carol, real quick, all the time. look at the schedule. If they go, if they have the Bears, the Texans, and the Titans coming up. If they wind up at, by then, four and three, or even if they lose one of those games and go three and four, those are all winnable games. Let's say they go, let's say they're three and four. They win two of their next three. And they're right in the thick of things in the South. And Luck has some huge games, which he's going to have to for them to win. Bunch of touchdowns, bunch of yards. He's not in the MVP conversation. You won't get one vote. He's not going to sniff. Because this whole division, this whole division is going to be about eight and eight when you're done, and everybody will disrespect it. Ah. They were, the, the argument will be there. Why are they in the playoffs? These are the things that I tried to tell yes, them at the beginning. We will see by the yeah. end of this season. You, you stay know. strong where you are. Yes. You stay where you are, bro. I'm, pr I'm, pr I'm proud of him for sticking to his point. I'm proud of him for sticking to his point. Congratulations with that. I'm just a little shaky. Would they take luck instead of Matt Ryan on the Falcons? Yes or no? Based on age, yeah, because Matt Ryan's up in years. They're the same age. Matt Ryan under a under a under Coming up next.